Welcome back guys. I wanted to do a quick uh, comparison between uh, these two bags. These are some uh, two of the heavyweights and they're two outstanding options. A lot of guys and gals may be uh, considering these. So I have recently had to use my uh, uh, Briggs and Riley for quite a bit of time because I wanted to do a video on this one before I've had it fixed and I was able to fix it myself. All the parts are very easily swappable. But uh, that meant that I had to use my Briggs for about uh, two months. And I learned a lot as far as how these compare. Now, the closest to this one that's available, uh, this is the Carbon Edition. They no longer make it. This is the Luggage Works Stealth Premier 22 Rolling Bag. That's what they call that. Going for $429.99. And then this one is the Global 21 two-wheel expandable carry-on from Briggs & Riley. All right, so let's take a quick look at these. Um, as far as overall design philosophy and idea, this bag is very tool-oriented for the professional. So not business-like at all. Stick out like a sore thumb. Everybody knows you're a pilot or a crew member. This one very business. Uh, if you're a commuter and you'd like to go incognito while you're commuting, uh, this one will do a great job because nobody will be able to tell that you're a crew member. So right off the bat, that's a huge difference. Um, Briggs and Riley guarantees their bags for life. So that's huge. Uh, luggage works, easily swappable parts, very affordable. So as far as operating expense, um, if you have a repair facility nearby, this is pretty much a zero. If you don't, you're going to have to ship the bag, and then that's actually going to be very expensive. Uh, this one, the parts are super cheap, so it's really not a big deal. Now, right off the bat, what's the biggest difference? Um, this is not exactly unloaded, so there's still some weight. The biggest difference, by far, are the wheels. By far. So I guess it depends greatly on how you load these bags. Um, given the, what we have experienced in the world in the recent uh, past, I started to um, carry my food once again. Uh, to those of you that were civilian pilots uh, early 2000s, you relate to this really well. Uh, I was poor back then and I had to bring food with me. And uh, today I do it because it's healthy. So I can bring ingredients. I can name the ingredients. <laughs> you don't need a dictionary and uh, organic stuff. So it's nice and healthy. It's also really easy. Uh, a lot of times nowadays with um, a new operating philosophy of major carriers, there isn't much time on the road. There really isn't. A lot of times my... Um, my uh, layovers are structured very, very similar. Get in, work out, eat dinner, read, go to bed. Boom. That's nine out of 10. Um, it is rare that I will have time to consider, oh, what am I going to do? <laughs> that never happens. So, what, so the biggest thing I was telling you is how you load this bag. So I carry the food with me, which means three total volumes. The carry-on plus the flight kit plus the lunch bag. That means that for this bag, this strap would uh, carry the carry-on, which as delicate as, the, as it is, this thing lasts, I'm surprised. Such a delicate little latch and plastic, uh, you'd think it'd be a tremendous weak point versus this beefy metal thing. Uh, this first strap lasted five years. This first strap lasted two years. Because uh, there was a, it broke right there. So as delicate as this is, it actually lasts a long time. Now, uh, the problem is that cooler bag, the lunch bag. That's where it really is a problem. Because what you end up having to do is you got to put it on the handle. Now, when you're putting it on the handle, the this, uh, I used to call it the wide body. It, it was called uh, international. Now it's the global all the same stuff. It's just a wider bag 
than the other 22 inch, which is a little bit narrower. So this one has got some hardened plastic over here and it doesn't tend to break as easily. The narrower one, I did break that uh, handle on the back side of it because of the moment arm. You end up putting a lot of torque in order to carry the bag. And it's not really designed for a lot of weight that is uh, torquing the handle, right? Um, as all things, when they're stressed in the proper manner that they're designed that last a long time, when they're not, they break really easily. And putting a third bag that's very heavy over here, up top makes it extremely heavy to drag the bag. If you put it over there, just wrap around on the lower end and let it drop, then it becomes a lot easier on the handle. I'm sorry, a lot easier on the shoulder because the CG of the bag just dropped. However, it does put a lot of stress on the handle. So if you put it up top, CG is high, and then it stresses your shoulder. You put it down low, it stresses the bag, my shoulder or the bag, the bag's gotta go, so the bag gets more stress. Um, the reason is this. The wheel of the Briggs, I don't know how the brand new ones are, but this one is flat. The contact point is uh, rather wide, truly unnecessarily so. On the luggage works, you're looking at uh, roller blades style wheels and bearings, and it rolls super well. That's the biggest difference. So just a huge uh, kind of user experience note to uh, differentiate both of these. That's number one. Um, as far as user experience, of course, you got the stylistic uh, differences, the philosophy and blah, blah, blah. So this one has like a thousand compartments, right? Um, with the compartments, you can put your stuff very precisely uh, wherever you want. So you got something that's very peculiar. Uh, you could drop it in here. Ha! I have this old school Alpa emergency dial card. <laughs> to those. Ah, that's old school. Anyway, um, very small compartment. So you can compartmentalize all the accessories, tools, cables, everything that you got, uh, which is really nice. You kind of get used to it. Um, take the, the handle out of the way. You got this, and then you got a pouch instead of a pouch to, to, to keep things organized. Um, that's something that at first, when I went from the Briggs to the Luggage Works, I was impressed by, but it didn't seem like that big of a deal. However, as time has gone by, uh, it's actually something I've grown to appreciate quite a bit. In fact, there are lots of pouches in it that I don't utilize, like this front one over here. I don't have it, I've never used it. So there's a lot of use you can get out of the pouches. Uh, very different from this bag. This bag has instead just a giant area in the front. Same thing inside. It's got just, uh, you know, large area. Not very compar compartmentalized. So if you like to separate all the little things individually, um, this one would be a better fit. If you'd like to blend in, this one would be a better fit. But I think that my main point that I would like to, uh, you know, give you as far as a tip between these two after having using both, I've used both of these for a long time. It's just that if you carry a cooler bag, this is a lot easier to carry. And then I, d I showed you how it would attach on, on the, the Briggs and the luggage works. Your flight kit goes here and then you can connect your cooler bag to these latches if your cooler bag has these latches. I have the cooler bag from Luggage Works, which it does. And then that works out really, really well. The weight is well distributed. And of course, it's got this monster handle. Uh, 
it's not going to break because it's metal. Uh, I'm not sure what the weak point here is. I haven't had any uh, thing break on this side. So if you have, let me know. But um, that lasts, I'm expecting that to last a very long time. So there you go. I just wanted to pop in and give you a quick comparison between uh, these two bags. Since I have the carbon edition, it's not too much heavier than this. I know that the luggage works bags empty uh, weigh about a ton. So you do have that weight issue. Uh, just be careful with your shoulders. That's about it, y'all. Thanks for checking in. See you next time.